Welcome everyone in this uh, lecture uh, or video. I want to go over projections and reflections in R3. Uh, please watch my last video on the projections and reflections in R2, and that's going to make much more sense if you watch that one uh, first. So let's see how this works. So let's say we have a vector with the components X, Y, Z in R3. And here, this is our vector. The projection of V onto the X axis. So I took this one again, this is 90 degrees is the X component of that vector, or you can write uh, x0, 0, 0, the projection of the onto the y-axis. So, and uh, that's the y component of that vector. So if we can bring this down, this is 90 degrees, and it's 0, y0, zero, and the projection of the onto the z-axis is the z component of the vector and uh, you can just write zero, zero, C. Now you can also project V onto the X, Y plane. So let me just show it here. If this is our X, Y plane, and again, this continues, I just did part of it. It's all this plane, the horizontal one. And they that take that vector and project it here. So that's the projection of V on to the XY plane. And guess what? It's just going to be the XY component of that vector. So you can write it here. Same way you can take the vector and project it onto the XZ plane. XZ plane is this vertical plane. And you can project that. So maybe not very well done, but then that's what you get. Again, it's the X, X and Z component of the vector. So it's going to be X zero Z and for the projection of the onto the Y Z plane is just the Y Z component of that plane and Y Z again is that plane. So you just project the vector on that plane. So I just did one example, showed you the drawing of one example. I think it's pretty straightforward. So now vector V can be written as X zero zero plus zero Y zero plus zero zero Z. And uh, these are just the projection of V onto the X axis plus the projection of V onto the Y axis plus the projection of V onto the Z axis. Also, we can write V as X zero zero plus zero Y Z. And this is just the projection. That's projection of V onto the X axis. And that's the projection of V onto the Y Z axis. Also, we can write V as zero Y zero plus X zero Z. And that's the projection of V onto the Y axis. It's right here plus the projection of the onto the XZ axis. So also V can be written as XYZ, which is zero, zero, Z plus XY zero. So that's the projection of the onto the Z axis plus the projection of the onto the XY plane. Now, how do the reflection work? If the reflection of the across x, y plane, we know that doesn't x, y don't change, but it's going to be minus c, or you can say x, y, 0, minus 0, 0, z. But what are these? This is the projection of the onto the x, y plane minus the projection of the onto the z axis. So basically, if we have our vector and we project it and the reflection of V across the X, Y plane is across this plane. So we just go down. So what happens, Z becomes negative. So negative component of Z, that's what you take. Now, same as R2, in R2, we learned again, please watch the last video that the reflection of V across a line is the projection of V across uh, or 
onto a line is a projection of the onto that line minus the projection of the on to the line that is perpendicular uh, to the to L and that's L perp or the up orthogonal complement of that. So that works in R3 also. Let's see how we can show that. First of all, the reflection operators, the reflection of V across the X axis. Again, here X stays the same, but Y and Z, you change the sign. So it's going to be X negative Y negative Z. Reflection of V across the Y axis, is negative X, Y, and negative Z. So Y stays, keeps the same sign. X and Y change. Sign is reflection of it across the z-axis. Now it's pretty straightforward. So it's going to be negative x, negative y plus z. Reflection of it across the xy plane. Again, it's going to be x, y. Those components, they don't change, but it's minus the reflection of it across the yz plane. So yz stay positive and it's minus x. And the finally, reflection of the across the XZ plane. XZ keeps the same sign and it's minus Y. Now let's talk about general reflections, projections and reflections. So it's not all, always XY plane, XZ plane, or YZ plane. Maybe we have a plane in 3D that passes through the origin. So if you have this plane, and let's call that pi. You know the components of the normal vector of this plane are 3, negative 5, 2z. So it's right there, that's the normal vector. And L is the span of n. And we know the span of one vector in uh, R3 is going to be a line. So if we kind of show that, we have our plane. And we have our vector. So, and this is the normal, and it's perpendicular, and that's the span of that normal vector. So it's going to be a line that is parallel to n. Now, the components of v, I didn't write it here, but it's x, y, z. What we want to find is the projection of v onto the plane, the projection of the onto the plane on the that plane pi. So it's going to be, uh, and if we draw this line is perpendicular, the projection of the onto the line L is that, and I put it here, and the reflection of V across P, again, it's going to be right there. So if that's the vector, we'll just bring it below the plane. So now let's see how we can find that. The projection of V onto the line is uh, just any scalar multiple of N. So you can just write that as KN. So it's going to be K times 3 times negative 5 times negative and uh, if uh, we know that vector v is the projection of v onto the plane plus the projection of v onto the line because the plane and the line are perpendicular to each other. So basically it's that plus that. Here we can isolate the projection of V onto the plane and say that's V minus that. So basically you can take that to the other side and write minus. So V, we know that is X, Y, Z. And we know we found the projection of V is 3K. A uh, projection of V onto the line is 3K minus 5K plus 2K. So you can see it's x minus 3k, y plus 5k. So, and so, 
minus minus so that should be plus and it's going to be z minus 2k now one thing we know that n and this is on the plane they are orthogonal to each other the projection of v onto the plane so if they are orthogonal to each other, the dot product of these two is going to give us zero so we have the components of n and we have the components of this projection so the dot product is that times that plus that times that and plus that times that so if you calculate that and simplify it, then uh, you get 3x minus 5y plus 2z minus 38k equals to 0. You can isolate k and you get 3x minus 5y plus 2z divided by 38. Now, where can we use this? We know that the projection of beyond the line was 3k minus 5k plus 2k. So you can take that expression and substitute. And if you simplify, then you get this operator, 9x minus 15y plus 60 over 38. And uh, again, all you have to do is distribute those numbers. The second component is going to be negative 15x plus 25y minus 10z over 38. And finally, 6x minus 10y plus 4z divided by 38. The projection of v onto the plane we know it was V minus the projection of V onto the line. And again, if we go back, that's where it comes from. So let's see, and we have everything here. So we have our V, which is X, Y, Z minus that we found here and you just, uh, the fast way of doing this, you can say 38 times X is 38 X minus nine X is gonna give you 29 X. And since there's a minus, you can just change those signs. So that becomes plus 15 and that becomes plus X. Same here, 38 times X is 38 X. 38 times Y is 38 Y minus 25 Y is gonna give you 13 Y. And you change the sign of the x code, the coefficient of x and the coefficient of z. 38 times z is 38z minus 4z, 34z, and that becomes negative 6, and that's plus 10 right here. So we have that. Now you can check if you take n and you do the dot product with that, the projection of v onto the plane you will get zero plus. Please try that on your own and you'll see you're gonna get zero. Now, if you want the reflection of V across the plane, so basically if we go up here, we want that. So if we want that, so that's just gonna be, if uh, we write the, the components, so if we, want that so we have to do the projection of v onto the plane minus the projection of v onto the line and that's going to give us that vector that's what we're looking for so let's see how we can find that so it's the projection of v onto the plane minus the projection of v onto the line and this we found it it's right here and that one is right here you just have to subtract denominators are the same 29 minus 9 is 20 and 15 negative minus plus 15 is 30 and 6 negative 6 and negative 6 is negative 12 but that it's over 38 and you can simplify it by two and you get 10x plus 15 y minus six equals to 90. Please redo this calculation. These are just simple arithmetic. Now, if we want the matrix of the projection of V onto the line, so you just go 
here we have that. So the X component is going to be 9 over 38, negative 15 over 38, and 6 over 38. And the Y component is going to be negative 15 over 38, 25 over 38, and negative 10 over 38, and so on. And let's see if we have that. So you can put X, Y, Z. So it's 9 over 38. And we can even read it from here. So 9 over 38. And we have negative 15 over 38 and 6 over 38. Y component is going to be negative 15 over 38. So 25 over 38 and negative 10 over 38. And the same thing for Z. And you can, they all work the same way. You can write the matrix of the projection of V onto the plane. And you can use the same thing when we add that. So you use this operator. And just to check, the first one is going to be 29 over 38. 15 over 38 and negative 6 over 38, so, which are right here. Now, the reflection, the matrix for the reflection of the across the plane. So again, you can use these operators and write the matrix. And these are symmetric matrices. Symmetric matrices, that means the matrix and its transpose are the same. I want you to notice something also. You can find the reflection of V across the line by doing the projection of V across the line minus the projection of V across the plane. And we have basically, you can take that minus that one and it's going to give you the answer. And after that, you can find the matrix. Please watch this couple of times and try the problem on your own and that way you will be able to do the homework problem. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next recording. Have a good one.